Hi everybody, according to traditional neoclassical thought, economic agents will always look to maximize their benefit. That is, firms maximizing profits, governments maximizing the social welfare of their citizens, uh, workers maximizing the welfare they derive at work, and consumers maximizing their utility when they make consumption decisions. In this video, we're going to isolate utility theory and understand in more detail why a consumer should consume in order to maximize their utility when they make consumption decisions. <clears throat> Let's go straight to this table and assume there is an individual who is dead thirsty, really parched, and is looking to maximize their utility when it comes to drinking cups of Coca-Cola. So I've drawn a table here and you've got cups of Coca-Cola on the left hand side. I've also put in numbers for total utility derived when more cups of Coke are drunk. We want to work out the marginal utility. Remember the marginal concept. The marginal is always the extra derived when one more is consumed or one more is produced, right? So in this case, what is the marginal utility? The marginal utility is the extra utility gained when one more cup of Coca-Cola is drunk. Okay, so the extra utility generated when an extra unit has been consumed. Utility, guys, just means satisfaction, so keep it simple like that. So what is the marginal utility? Well, when the first cup is drunk, it's eight, then it's uh, six, then it's four, then it's two, zero, and minus two. Okay, so the extra utility generated when one more cup of Coca-Cola has been drunk. What about average utility? Well, the average utility is just the total utility divided by the quantity. And that gives us 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, and 3. Very simple. Another way of looking at marginal utility is by saying that marginal utility is equal to the marginal private benefit when a unit is consumed. And if you think about it, if utility is satisfaction, they both mean exactly the same thing. So bear that in mind as we go through the video as well. So let's take this data and plot some curves, the marginal utility curve and the average utility curve. First thing to say is how we label the axis. The y-axis, if we're drawing utility curves, must be labeled utils, where utils is just units of satisfaction. And on the x-axis, we have quantity in terms of cups of Coca-Cola. So if I plot my marginal utility and average utility curves, I get something that looks like that. And you can see that both are downward sloping, and they are downward sloping because of the law of diminishing utility. The downward slope can be clearly seen in the table here, and the reason is due to the law of diminishing utility, which states that as more quantities consumed, so as quantity consumed increases, the marginal utility derived from each extra unit decreases. So as quantity consumed increases, the marginal utility derived from each unit actually decreases. That is the law of diminishing utility. And it makes sense, doesn't it? The idea is very simple. When that person drinks the first cup of Coke, they are so thirsty, they are so parched, it generates huge utility. Eight units of utility for that one, for that first cup of Coke. But then the next one still generates more utility, but not as much as the first. The one after that, again, generates more utility, four utils in this case, but not as much as the second. And that happens until we get to the fifth unit. When the fifth unit is drunk, right, there is no more utility to be gained compared to the fourth one. Yeah? And then if that consumer drinks the sixth unit, what happens? It starts to feel worse, right? Maybe it feels a bit bloated, feels a bit gassy, feels a little bit sickly, right? And that's what we mean when we have a negative marginal utility. That consumer starts to feel worse. So the law of diminishing utility is very clear in this case. The more that is consumed, the less benefit we derive from each unit that we are consuming. Very simple concept here. So can we apply that concept, the law of diminishing utility, to then explain where a consumer will look to maximize their total utility? Well, absolutely. Um, from the table and also from the diagram on the right hand side, we can clearly see that total utility is maximized when this consumer stops at the fifth cup of Coke. At the fifth cup of Coke, total utility has been maximized. If this consumer goes one more, total utility starts to decrease. So what we can say more clearly is that total utility is maximized where marginal utility is equal to zero. So where? marginal utility is equal to zero. That is where total utility is maximized. It doesn't make sense stopping at a quantity below five in this case, because more utility could be generated if more units of, uh, or more cups of cola are drunk. And it doesn't make sense to consume beyond five because then marginal utility goes negative, bringing down total utility. If I draw the total utility curve, this is not exactly plotted, but roughly plotted, we can see that it looks like this and the peak of the total utility is hit at the quantity of 5. 
Again, the shape of total utility is derived due to the law of diminishing utility. Total utility increases, but at a slower rate as more quantity is consumed because marginal utility is decreasing up until we hit the peak where marginal utility is zero, total utility is maximized, and then if we consume more cups of Coca-Cola after five units, total utility comes down because marginal utility goes negative at that quantity level. Okay, so that makes it very clear that a rational consumer looking to maximize their utility will consume units up until where marginal utility is zero. Let's now understand if we can apply this idea more realistically to the real world. In the real world, economists simplify things and say that price is equal to utility. So therefore we can amend our y-axis, given that assumption that economists have, and say that we can have price on the y-axis as well as utils. So if price is equal to utility, where will a rational consumer look to maximize their utility? Well, it makes sense to consider this because in the real world there are prices for goods and services, right? So let's take an example here and let's say that a price, the price of a cup of Coca-Cola is equal to four pounds. Where will a rational consumer consume to maximize their utility when they drink cups of Coca-Cola? Well, they'll keep consuming units as long as what they are getting is more than what they are paying, i.e. they're paying four pounds in each case. If the utility they're getting is more than four pounds, then it's worth consuming that unit. So is it worth consuming the first unit? Yes, because the first unit generates eight pounds worth of utility, they're only paying four pounds. The second unit generates six pounds worth of utility, they're only paying four pounds, so buy that one. The third unit generates four pounds worth of utility, and they're paying four pounds. So it makes sense to consume that one as well. Does it make sense to consume the fourth unit? The fourth unit generates two pounds worth of utility, but the consumer is paying four pounds. So it doesn't make sense to consume that unit at all. So it makes sense to keep consuming units as long as the utility being derived is more than what is being paid for, i.e. a rational consumer, when there is a price involved, will maximize their utility by consuming up until marginal utility is equal to the price. Okay? We made it very clear there. But we can actually make a conclusion that is a bit deeper than that as well. We said that the marginal utility is equal to the marginal private benefit. What we are going to prove now is that the marginal utility curve is also the demand curve. Let's go back to four, okay? So the price of a cup of Coca-Cola is four pounds, and we said that a rational consumer will maximize their utility by buying uh, three cups of Coca-Cola at that price. Let's now say that the price goes up to six pounds. If the price goes up to six pounds, how many cups of Coca-Cola should a rational consumer looking to maximize their utility buy? Well, they should buy the first one because that generates eight pounds of utility, and they're only paying for six. They should buy the second one because that generates six pounds worth of utility and they are paying for six. They are paying six pounds. So it makes sense for that consumer to purchase two cups of coke. So when the price has gone up from four pounds to six pounds, the quantity demanded has fallen, hasn't it? Less cups of Coca-Cola are being drunk now. Three when it was four pounds and now only two when the price has gone up to six pounds. What if the price falls to two pounds? But if the price falls to two pounds, does it make sense drinking the first cup of Coca-Cola? Yes. If that generates eight pounds of utility, the consumer is only paying for two. The second generates six, only paying two. The third generates four, only paying two. The fourth generates two pounds worth of utility, and that's what the consumer is paying. So it makes sense for a rational consumer to buy four cups of Coca-Cola to maximize their utility. And we can see, compared to a price of four pounds, that is an increase in quantity demanded. So we can see that when the price goes up, there is less quantity demanded. When the price goes down, there is more quantity demanded. And that is because when the price goes up, less units will satisfy this condition of maximizing utility, where mu equals p. Whereas when the price goes down, more units can be consumed to maximize utility, given the condition of marginal utility equals price being the utility maximization point when a price is involved. So therefore, we can say that the marginal utility is the demand curve. So marginal utility, yes, is the marginal private benefit, which is why we draw it down and slope it with market failure diagrams, but it's also equal to demand, i.e. it's also the demand curve. So now you know in more detail why the demand curve is down and sloping. Where does it come from? It comes from the law of diminishing marginal utility.
That is the deeper idea behind it. And that is underpinning of really what economics is all about. So bear this all in mind. Very important stuff. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Hope that all made sense. I'll see you all in the next video.